Alright guys, welcome to the channel, and this is our first video. It is going to be my top 10 book series in no particular order, so hope you guys enjoy, and if any of these interest you, I hope you go and read them. Alright, kicking off the list, we got Pierce Brown's Red Rising at number 1. The reason I put this on my list is all the, all the characters are extremely well written, especially the main character, Darrow. He is awesome. He is very well written, very well, you feel for the guy, you feel for everything. In the beginning, he's got that one revenge goal. But as he slowly meets the other goals and slowly starts work learning about their society, his idea of what he really wants changes dramatically. It just, it changes him as he's learning, as he's going through all this. It, he slowly starts to evolve, which is great. Yeah. Another awesome character that I personally love is Severo. He is Darrow's best friend, he's got his back through everything. He's the person you want to be in your corner when you have a fight. He will just defend Darrow, do whatever he wants. And what's great is, he just, he has some of the best dialogue in the entire series. A lot of it goes to him, a lot of the funny lines are from him, or responses to what he's saying, and he's just, he's a solid, fun, fun character that everyone just falls in love with. <laughs> so, another reason I did put this on my list is because of Cassius. Great character, solid, well-written character, you get to really feel for the guy after all the stuff in the Institute goes down, and you can sort of really you understand his point of view of, like, what happens. I'm not going to say anything specific, but read the series and you can understand his point of view so well that you really do feel sympathy for the guy and you don't blame him for what he does, which I really love. I don't love a character where you can... He's one-dimensional. He's so not one-dimensional because... You feel for him. You understand exactly what he's doing and why he's doing it, which is why he is definitely by far the top tier, one of the top tier characters of the entire series. So, last point about the Red Rising series. If you do want to read it, just be warned, it is very intense, got just really intense in a lot of part in a bunch of parts. So, if you're not someone who loves like just pure out destruction and mayhem, I I would not really read this series because there is a lot of just destruction, carnage, and there are a couple of brutal deaths in this entire series. Taking the number two spot, we got Christopher Paulini's Inheritance series. So, this is a really classic, classic fantasy series, so one reason I really do love this is the two main characters. I'm going to talk about Aragon and Saphira together because they are, they do largely complement each other because, they, because of the nature of their bond within the story, a lot of their character development happens along the same lines. There are large parts of the stories, especially in book three, where they do have to be al alone for a while, which does force them to kind of become more by, their, by themselves. Another really just solid part of the series is Roaring, who's one of the main, who's one of the secondary characters, but he does get a large part of the story, like, there are sections within each of the books, especially, particularly in book two, where we'll sidetrack from Roar from Aragon and we'll go into Roran and we follow his. 
storyline. And it's just as interesting as Aragon's, as a sort of side, as a side quest. It is really interesting, and it kind of gives, it kind of gives the book a really good change of pace, because you're not just constantly following Aragon during his training, you're jumping back and forth from Aragon to Rorin. And I just really love, I really like what Paolini ends up doing with Rorin. And finally, last point for why this is on the list is Murtag. Really good sort of foil to Aragon. He's just a really good foil to him as far as his personality, his situation. He was raised a noble, but he ends up just getting the shaft his entire life. And it just, it really defines his character, that he was born in luxury, but he just gets the shaft constantly. Whereas Aragon gets, he was raised on the farm, but he ends up becoming free, and being the first free dragon rider aside. In, a, in opposition to Galbatorix. And he does go through a bit of, an, of a redemption arc. The only thing is, I wish we'd, we'd seen more of Murtag throughout the series. Like, if we jumped to Murtag as he was training under Galbatorix, or more like being forced to train under Galbatorix, I think it would have endeared him to us a bit more. Taking the number three spot, we have Dennis E. Taylor's The Bobaverse series. Awesome sci-fi series. It weirdly, a solid sci-fi series. The main character, Bob, really good protag. We follow his adventures as he's trying to find new habitable worlds for whatever's left of the human race. And he, along the way, he starts making clones of himself. And it gets super philosophical, weirdly enough, which is a really good strength of the series. As he's making the clones, the philosophical question becomes, well, am I the original Bob, or am I someone else? And to remedy this, each of the clones takes up a distinctive name. And, w and what's really good is Dennis e. Taylor gives each of the clones a personality and we follow a bunch of them as they're going through and finding the colonies. So it's not, it just doesn't follow Bob singularly. He does have a large part of it, part in the story, but there's other Bobs that are that are doing things, and we get to follow those bobs as they're going through each of their adventures. Alright, taking the number four spot, we have Tran Matthew, I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong, the Summoner Trilogy. Interesting trilogy. The way I would describe this is literally Harry Potter meets Pokemon, and I know that is an insane combo, but weirdly enough, it, it works, because the magic system in this is each person can summon a demon, and just like Pokemon, these demons have levels, which, honestly, I never thought that would work, but it does. Also, the world, the world is really good in this. It's sort of this Victorian era London, like Europe, kind of set place, and then it's also got this kind of, it's got your traditional magic sort of feel, and it's, it's really good, you really get into the world, and it's under the backdrop of a war, so that's always a, that's always a nice touch, so between the concept, the world, and also the characters, Fletcher is a super good protag. He's solid, he's really relatable, and kind of really, really interesting to follow. Between those three things, that's why that's made my list. Alright, 
So, we got, for number five, Artemis Fowl by Aaron Kofler. Right off the bat, the thing that makes this series so good is the characters. It is really good. We got Artemis, who just, when we first meet the series, get into the series, he is this just arrogant, completely just narcissistic dude who, through the series, becomes less and less narcissistic as he meets the other characters. And the other really good character in this is Holly, who is literally the absolute opposite of Artemis in just about everything. She is completely on top of it, really athletic and powerful, whereas Artemis is the brains of the group. And the, gr the fun of the series is just watching them interact and all the funny arguments and banter that they get into. So that is why Artemis Fowl has made it onto the list. Okay, for number six, we have got Ridley Pearson's The Kingdom Keepers. And this series really does hinge on the concept and the characters. Because the concept and the story really revolves around this war between the Disney villains, which they call the Overtakers, and the, the main five, who they call the Kingdom Keepers, obviously. And what's really good is each of the five does have a sort of defining quality about them, but they grow beyond just being that. And that's kind of the fun of the series because it's one of those series where we sort of follow them as they grow. And we they it really endears them to us, which is always fun. Okay, for number seven, we have Ridley Pearson's The Return, which is the sequel series to the original Kingdom Keepers. So this series really, it's more of an expansion and explanation for a lot of what happens for the Kingdom Keepers. It does, it explains how the Overtakers come to be, what how their ideology forms, and who forms them. And a lot of the fun of the Return series is seeing how each of the kids deals with being, after they time travel, being in the 1950s. And it's a complete shift because Kingdom Keepers was set during modern times. Return for the a large majority of it is set during the 1950s, so it's fun to just see how each of them is reacting to the social norms and the social just situation at the time. And that is why King Keepers The Return is number seven. Alright. So, at number 8, we got Rick Riordan's Heroes of Olympus series. And this series really does build off the success of Percy Jackson. Because not only do we have Percy, Annabeth, and Nico, a lot of the fan-favorite characters from the original series, we got a bunch of new characters which also really have become fan-favorites. We got Nico, we got Leo, we got Frank, and all of them. They have become really good fan favorite characters and it really builds off the strengths of those characters as each as each book goes on they are growing they are building they are building themselves into better people which I personally always find really good so So, for number 9, we have the OG Percy Jackson series. You knew this would be on the list. It is 
always solid, always fun to go back to it. Percy's the best. Annabeth is awesome. They are just solid written. As as we're reading the series, we are as we read the series, they are growing. They are evolving. They are becoming better characters. It is the top-notch series. And I love, personally, I love Nico's plotline, The Demigod at a Time. It is such a great storyline that I really like how Rick does it, and I love how he continues it through to Heroes of Olympus. So that is why the OG Percy Jackson series is number nine. So, for number 10, we have Ernest Cline's Ready Player One. And I really like Wade, the protagonist, in this because he is super relatable, super just a regular everyday guy who just gets caught up in this Hunt for Holidays egg. And throughout the story, we see all the crazy stuff it forces him to do because he pushes away his friend, he pushes away his friends and everyone that he really feels a connection to in Pursuit of the Egg. And it just, it drives him to do whatever. And it's a really just solid cautionary tale that sometimes we should not live in the virtual reality, but we need to moderate it with our actual reality, no matter how un unhappy we might be in that reality, it's still reality. So that is why Ernest Cline's Ready Player One is number 10. So, for an honorable mention, we have E.K. Johnston's Ahsoka novel. And this novel is really impactful to me because I grew up watching The Clone Wars and watching it with, as Ahsoka grows into the character we see her as in this book. So, in the book, this takes place a couple years after Order 66 and all that goes down. So, Ahsoka's kind of in hiding. Kind of hiding from the Empire and the Inquisitors and all that. And throughout the book, we actually see... We get these sort of flashbacks to the Clone Wars. To the Siege of Mandalore in particular, and during Order 66, which we will definitely see during Season 7 of Clone Wars. And it really sort of gives us an understanding of where Ahsoka was when all that went down. The only thing that bring that didn't... The only thing about this book that didn't, like, thrill me about is... Because there's no emotional tension. Any tension that they put Ahsoka in is kind of negated because we know she has to survive through to Rebels. So, hey guys, thank you for watching the video. It has been an honor showing you guys my top 10 series. And if any of you find that you really like these books, let me know. And if anyone has any recommendations for books that they think I should read, just drop them down in the comments. Drop them in the comments, and I will try and get to them. And I will see you next week. Next week's video will be the Artemis Fowl trailer review.